Hey guys, welcome to my vlog today. Uh, we got some pretty cool stuff going on today. Number one, first and foremost, in no particular order, my eyeball. Right off the bat, we went to the doctor. I got information on my eyeball. The difference from yesterday with the dull blades and what it does to, to grass, to sharp blades and how it cuts the grass. So you're gonna see a, a good difference between yesterday's video and today's video. We got mail call. That's right, I got my first mail call today. My TB360 went down hard today. I broke it, my fault. So I show you my temporary fix. All that is coming up, plus a little bit more of general conversation, things that are going on. Good morning, so we're gonna head out today. We got 11 to do, all local. Um, we actually have 14 to do um, local, but I'm gonna let old boy do three of them tomorrow. There are two good sized yards that he normally does um, every other Saturday. And a new one that we picked up yesterday. Um, it's a one time cleanup and it's a big cleanup. It's a big job. So I'm just gonna let him go there, spend a few hours there. I charge the customer accordingly. Um, so that's gonna give him a little bit of extra work. So what we're gonna do is, normally he would do five tomorrow three that are right right together in my neighborhood right around the corner here and then two that are right across the street from each other that are in a, a neighboring neighborhood so I'm gonna give him the two that are in the neighboring neighborhood that's on the way to the one cleanup that I'm gonna have him do so we'll do these three here and add that to our day so we're gonna head out we're gonna do 11 today um, and that's gonna close out my week and then um, that will leave the three for him to do tomorrow, make a little money for the business, make a little extra money for himself. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's the plan, that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, just to continue on with yesterday's conversation about blade sharpening and you know, seeing the visual signs. If you look now at the grass, see how it's nice? It's cut straight, it's not all torn, it's not white. Those are nice, that's a nice cut right there. So all the blades of grass now have a nice cut and that's the difference between sharp blades and dull blades. So there's some really nice, that's a nice perfect cut. Stays green on top, it's not all frayed, It's the grass blade's not splitting down, there's no hairs coming out, nice. That's what sharp blades can do. When you start seeing the blades getting all frayed like that and turning all white, uh, and shredding and tearing Then you know you got you got an issue and you need to take care of that you need to sharpen or replace those blades So I put a fresh set of blades on this morning quick lesson Working with my guy today and I'm like hey dude because he was done weed eating and he comes from the backyard I'm blowing off. He's got the weed in his hand. I'm like hey go up by the front door there and kick those rocks back in the flower beds I don't know if it was from you or the kids but I don't want to leave those rocks sitting out, you know. Could have been from him grinding weeds or whatever. So he lays the weed eater down, starts to walk up the driveway. Problem is, he laid the weed eater down behind the customer's cars. Eh, wrong answer. Never do that. Customer will come out of that garage, not even know the weed eater's there, and drive right over your weed eater. Done. What are you going to do? You can't blame the customer. It's your fault. So, uh, just a little quick lesson. Be mindful of your equipment. Think about those little things. Those little things right there can cost you hundreds of dollars. So be real careful of that. Watch your guys, watch what they do, and don't just yell at them, but instruct them. Uh, 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 can't do that. Customer will run it over. Put it in the grass or put it in the trailer where it belongs. All right, so uh, anyways, we got two done, we're on three, then we got four, then we got five, then we got three more to do, then we go to my neighborhood for three more. Hey guys, I wanna show you uh, how to do how I do three point turns with the zero turn. Uh, so the first thing you need to do, uh, I'm not gonna narrate while I'm mowing, I'm just gonna mow. So I'm gonna talk you through it now and these are the things I want you to look for. First thing is, you square off the yard with a couple passes, that gives you room to do your three point turn. So that way when you go to the fence and you do your three point turn, you have cut grass to work on. So you do your square a couple times, okay? And then, if you notice, the inside wheel of your three point turn so if you're turning to the right, the right wheel is your inside wheel. If you're turning to the left, the left wheel is your inside wheel. The inside wheel never stops moving during any turns. 
that's a pivot and if you pivot that wheel you're gonna make a divot and a divot is a dirt mark in your customers lawn so it's very important that you always have a flow going with all your wheels all right so let me set this camera up we're gonna do some squares first then I'm gonna reposition the camera and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, and start going back and forth and just watch how I do my three-point turns I got distance here now between the grass and the fence to give me room to work. mowing because this yard was a little bit thick and I don't have a shoot blocker uh, and really uh, mowing in that pattern almost like a stripe pattern it's kind of not beneficial because you really need a shoot blocker for that so I had to chase some clippings um, but I hope you got the idea I hope you saw how I did that you just always keep that inside wheel moving uh, long sweeping turns and it's even uh, you even have to do it more if it's wet so you really gotta be careful Hey guys, got a quick update for you. Take a look at my eye. Can you see it? China. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see my eye? Uh, just went to the dock. Um, I walked in. I was like, hey, I just need my eye looked at. What do I got to do? She said, come here. Let me look. She looked at it. She's like, oh yeah, you broke a blood vessel. I was like, huh. How did I do that? She's like, high blood pressure. Um, that can cause it. I'm like, well, no. So she took my blood pressure and everything was good there. Um, but anyways, that's what it is broken blood vessel. So it's not a sty. It's not pink eye um, She took a picture and then showed me on her phone what it, you know How it works and where it is and everything and so she said it'll get better as day goes on or as as the days go on But it's gonna take like two weeks. So guys for like two weeks. You're gonna have to deal with this mess This is a hot mess. It's an ugly mess and I like the camera on this side of me because this is my good side. Because remember what I said outside a few days ago? Because I'm beautiful. So this is my beautiful side. This isn't. This is. Isn't. Is. So. Mail call. Uh-oh. Dog call. Rocky call. Hey, Rocky. Guys, it's an epic haul. Epic haul. 
P.O. Box, Epic Hall, um, and there's one box. But this is my first box, so it's epic. It's an epic mail haul. Um, I got my first box today from a subscriber. Going forward, it will be known that if you send me something, shirt, a hat, um, whatever, it, trinkets, something for the kids, whatever, if you send me something, let it be known, I will publicly say who sent it. All right, so you will get credit. This one's from Mr. Gentry, and he did leave a public comment that said, expect the package this week. So I got the package this week, and it was a public comment that he said it in, so I don't have a problem with saying thank you, Mr. Gentry, before I even open this. So let's see what we got. I got Rocky on my lap. who's always on my lap. Watch out, buddy. We don't want to cut you. But it's always me and Rocky. Me and Rocky, me and Rocky. And for those of you that think that I don't pay a lot of attention to Manny, trust me, I do. Rocky sleeps across me all night long. Manny cuddles me like a full-size pillow all night long. And when the boys are here, the boys sleep on the couch, um, which is why I keep my couches covered because of dog hair and everything. And before the boys come, I wash the covers and then I put them back up on the couch. Um, Manny sleeps with my, my oldest boy, Nathaniel. Um, so that's his dog. Uh, so. But let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Uh-oh. <laughs> awesome. Steel hats. Oh, that's cool, man. Thank you, Mr. Gentry. I really appreciate it. That is awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is cool. I like this black one. That's awesome right there. Um, definitely neat. And you know what? When my kids come over on a weekend, we're going we're gonna to take some pictures with them. A little bit big. It's Velcro though, I can adjust it. Can you guys please stop fighting? I mean, seriously. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Gentry. Steel. Team Steel. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I got my first official um, mail call. That's really cool. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I got to show you a boo boo I did. I did a boo boo. I broke my TB360. I broke it, I broke it bad. Let me show you how it happened. All right, here's my trailer. Okay, it might get a little bit hard to see because of shadowing and stuff, so I'll do the best I can. But my TB360 fits at the nose of the trailer when I fold the handle down. That's why most of the time I just leave it in the bed of my truck. Um, with two people, it's not hard to do. I could just, you know, we just grab it in and out when I need it. And it's out of the way and it makes it a little bit easier for my um, ZTX to go in and out, you know. Now, I was like, well, you know, on the last lawn of the day, uh, I'm just going to start, um, you know, the last time that I used this, the, the, the TB360, the last one of the day, I'll just break the handle down and put it away. And then I won't have to unload it out of my truck and load it back up in the morning, you know. So I, I did that yesterday. Um, well... I misjudged driving my zero turn back into my trailer and I backed over the handle of the TB360. And when I did that, let me show you what happened. I caught the cables here. Hopefully this shows with here, okay? When I did that, I ripped the cable, the operator presence cable. That's the cable. It's called a control cable. That cable is the cable of that little red handle that you have to hold down in order to start the engine. When you let go of the red handle, the engine turns off. That's your operator presence cable. So let me show you what happened. Let me show you my temporary fix. So what happened is it snapped right here. I rode over it and it snapped on the bottom. I broke it, right? So to fix it, Take the end of your cable here. See how it has a squeeze point? Well, maybe this way will be better. See how you have a squeeze point here? Well, that squeeze point of this cable goes right here in this big old hole right there. And then the cable goes out into here. So what I did is I pulled the broken cable out of this sleeve and pulled this over by hand 
and then wrapped it around the height adjuster, which we're not going to need to adjust tomorrow, to pull this this way in order for the machine to start and run. Now, to turn the machine off, what you got to do is I take a wooden handle and I just pop the spark plug off. That's my temporary fix. Not a manufacturer's defect. That was my fault. I misjudged. I wrote over it. I felt it happen when I did it. I felt a in my mower and I was like, oh shit. And I didn't know what I had done until I pulled the mower out today. So I ordered a new cable already at, at um, the Troy Built uh, Repair Shop where they do Troy Builds and stuff like that. So I have that fixed. Um, I have that coming. It'll be here in a few days. It's $17. Um, at Jack Small Engines, it would be 13 something plus shipping. Um, so here at the local shop, it's $17. Um, and I don't have to pay for the shipping, so whatever. It's about the same. And it'll just be the cable, and I'll just swap the new cable out when it gets here. My fault, my bad, I did it. Nobody else's fault. Can't blame anybody but me. Um, and you know, shit happens in the mowing industry, so you gotta know how to fix it. So if you ever break that, that cable, that operator presence cable, if you ever break that cable, then somehow, one way or another, you have to be able to pull the thing over and secure it. And as long as you can do that, the machine will run, uh, but then you have to remember to pull the spark plug out. So. That happened, but we got through our jobs today. And uh, so we'll close out today's vlog uh, with a update for the week. We completed all the work I wanted to get done and I ordered the parts, like I said. Also, I ran up there and I ordered and they came in today. So I had to go to that shop anyways. I got my new front caster wheels. So I'm gonna have these spares. I ordered two because like really nobody stocks caster wheels. <laughs> I don't know why, but they don't stock them. So I ordered two, I got two now. So I'm gonna always have those here. Uh, so if I shred a front caster wheel or something, I have it in stock to do a quick replacement. Um, so I thought that was kind of important to do. And uh, and uh, and while I was there, I just ordered the cable. So I had to go there anyways for the caster wheels and ended up ordering the cable. Um, I was asked about the wheels. I took the hubcaps off. I think I have one here somewhere. Sitting around here somewhere. I don't know where. Thought I did. Maybe not. Thought I had. I took the hubcaps off because it makes it faster. Makes it lighter and it cuts more. more I'm kidding. I took them off because it's just tough looking. And I take them in the backyard and I throw them at the dogs and play frisbee. Um, they just pop right off. There's no purpose of them. They're just, I don't know. But screw it. I think it looks tough without it. I think it looks, I don't know. It's my blacked out TB360. Things bad to the bone. Makes me want to wash it and wax it. But I'm not going to. But uh, yeah. So today's vlog is done. It's over. That's it. Kaput. We did what we needed to do. Tomorrow, old boy has a helper. He's got uh, eight. No, he's got one, two, three, four, five. He's got six yards to do tomorrow. Um, they're pretty decent sized yards. Nothing, um, nothing that's too, too bad, but um, it's gonna take him a little bit. He does have a helper. I expect he should be done around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Um, so we were going to do, um, we were going to do three more today and relieve him of some work tomorrow and just give him the two, the two yards that are together right across the street from each other and then a new clean out that we're doing tomorrow. Um, but he got a helper to work with him. So I was like, all right, well, I'll let you do those three plus those two together and plus that new one. So we'll see how he does. Like I said, I mean, he's loyal. I'm loyal. I'm gonna be loyal to him and give him another shot, see how he does. Uh, but this is his last chance at uh, running the show. If he doesn't pull it out, then uh, he's just gonna be a worker dude. And that's about it. Um, so let me go ahead and get this vlog up and Tomorrow's a huge run day, so we're going to do a running vlog tomorrow, and we'll do a St. Jude uh, Charities update tomorrow. So uh, if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe, hit the like button. If I don't say that, the thumbs up, my, uh, my son Matthew will kick my butt. So go ahead and smack that like button, smack that subscribe button, and I will see you guys tomorrow 
on a long, long run. All right, so uh, we're gonna go for like nine miles tomorrow because I feel good, so let's do it. And I'll see you guys. Thank you so much, bye.